Hi everyone, welcome to the next map design tutorial on my somewhat new YouTube channel. Today I'll be showing you all how to make building footprint shadows using Adobe Illustrator. And I'm going to be using this work in progress of the Centrum neighborhood in Oslo, Norway to show you this technique today. The reason I'm sharing this tutorial using a map I haven't quite finished yet is that I posted this work in progress a few days ago on Instagram and a few folks either commented on or asked how to create this shadow effect. And it's a really fun effect to use on the large scale maps and large scale meaning closer to the earth than smaller scale maps, which is further from the earth. When your maps are very large scale like this one, you can reasonably depict building footprints, which are those spaces on the map that are covered by buildings. And a lot of times in a map like this, that doesn't have any sort of 3D technique or obliqueness to it, the building footprints are gonna have a flat appearance. And that is pretty typical. But sometimes I like to add a little bit of a shadow, nothing too stark, just to give the map a slightly bit more interesting aesthetic. And normally I would do this shadow hack only on maps that where the buildings are about as large as they are in this map. For example, Here's a map I made that covers part of Seattle, Washington in the US. And I used building footprints on this map, as you can see, but the scale is a little too small to add the shadow effect. And by the way, if you're curious about how to make this half tone shoreline effect, check out my map shorelines and illustrator tutorial on this channel. Okay, so you can tell from the title of this video that I am going to be using the blend tool for this building shadow effect. So the blend tool, if I go to object, Blend, that's where you find it. Like most Illustrator functions, the Blend tool is very powerful in the sense that there are many different ways to apply the tool. I'm just going to show you one aspect of the Blend tool in this tutorial, but I recommend checking out the wonderful videos that are out there on YouTube on the many different things you can do in Illustrator with the Blend tool. The Blend tool in Illustrator morphs or blends the appearance of selected objects together. So why don't I just show you? So you go to Object Blend. The first thing you need to do is set the Blend to Options. You have some different options here. You can do smooth color, specified steps, or specified distance. For this building shadow effect, I use specified steps and it's set at 25. So what does that mean? Well, if I set this at two and clicked okay, if I blend these two shapes together, it's gonna create two steps between these two shapes that will approximate the transition of one circle to the other. So this light circle to the dark circle. So it should basically create some sort of gradient where it goes from lighter to darker. Let's see if it does that. So I select the two shapes, Oops, the two shapes I wanna blend. And then I go to object, blend and make. Illustrator is kind enough to show us what the keyboard shortcuts are. Alt, control B on a PC and Alt, command B on a Mac. I'm just gonna click that. And now I have two circles in between my first and last original circle. And you can see it's getting darker along this gradient. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna undo that and reset the blend specified steps to 25 and click OK. So now it should create 25 different circles in between this lighter circle and this darker circle to give us a little bit smoother appearance of the blend. So blend and make or alt control B. And that's very nice. I get a nice blended look. I only use 25. So if we zoom in, we can get a really good sense of those 25. Zoom back out to full screen. You can set this much higher than 25. So if I am going to blend these two, I just control alt B and then I get this singular shape. It's blending together. It's, it's not that exciting. What happens if I blend this light circle with this smaller, darker square? Just select those, control alt B, and then I get this nice blend from one shape to another. It's sort of morphing or tweening, if you will. So now we're gonna blend this very tiny dark circle with this yellow bright star to create a shooting star. And that is a quick demo of the blend tool. So here's that Oslo map in progress in Illustrator. I made this map using a tool called ArcGIS Maps for Adobe, or you can call it Maps for Adobe for short. It's a mapping plugin that can be used to make maps with Adobe Illustrator. These building footprints that I'm using to demo are from OpenStreetMap. The first thing I'm going to do to make my building shadow, here's the final shadow, I'll lock that layer so I don't interact with that, is I'm going to select the original buildings layer and duplicate it. Boom, now I have this duplicate layer. I'm gonna take the duplicate down and in this duplicate layer, this is where I'm going to be creating my shadow effect. So I'm gonna rename this new 
shadow. Before I create the shadow, let's talk about shadows in maps. Here is a hill shade that I drew with pencil. It's a hill shaded map of the North Cascades area, which is a very mountainous area. And anytime you see a map like this that has shaded relief or hill shade, sometimes we call it, you'll notice that the light source is always coming from the upper left usually the upper left, sometimes the upper right, but always upper and almost always upper left. And the reason for that is that we are used to the light source as we walk around the earth, the light coming from above. If the light source was coming from down below in a map, then the terrain would look inverted. The high areas would look low, like they're sinking into the ground, and the low areas would look high, like they're the high peaks. And this is a trick that our mind plays on us because of the way we're used to seeing light sources. So for that reason, I'm going to make the light source appear as though it's shining on this aspect of each building. And to do that, all I'm going to do is make the shadow fall on this aspect, the southeast aspect of each building. So the first thing I'm going to do is here's that duplicate shadows layer. I'm going to group this so I have all of these new buildings in a group. And then I'm going to duplicate this group and select the bottom one. So I only have this bottom group selected right here. I'm gonna drag each one of these buildings so that they fall a little bit down on the southeast aspect of the building. So to do that, I just click one, click and drag one of these paths so I can do them all together. And right about there, looks seems like a good place for the building footprints. And I'll click away so you can see what I just created. So it just looks like a kind of like some sort of mess. And that's because the building shadows have the same appearance as the building themselves. So I'm going to select that group that I just dragged. And I will make the fill color for those buildings a little darker. Click OK. And I will remove the stroke. Actually, I want this kind of turned into a sort of this gradient symbol. I'm going to make it a solid without a gradient and just the color that I added. So I'll click away again to see what I just did. So it kind of gives that building shadow already. I'm going to now blend these two groups together so that it's smooth because if I zoom in a little, you can see it just kind of looks now like it's floating. This corner, I'll zoom in a little bit more. It's probably not that easy to see. This corner is not jointed with this one and the, each building is like that. So I need to blend that original copy of the buildings, this group, with this group. So I select those two, go to Object, Blend, and Make. And there we go, we have our blend. Let's zoom in and see what we have. We are zoomed in at 195%. And it looks pretty smooth. If I were to zoom out to 100%, this would look very smooth. So there we go. And then of course, you can spend some time in Illustrator giving your map your unique design. Thanks for watching this demo on how to hack building footprint shadows on maps using Adobe Illustrator.